having a lovely day so far. I'm in an excellent mood, unsurprisingly, because it's a blue sky day, it's the weekend, and we are doing family gardening <laughs> this weekend. So my brother's here, um, Lala is coming over shortly, and we are going to be snowdrop splitting. The boys are sorting out um, bark, mulch, and compost across all the beds, and Lala and I are going to be splitting snowdrops, which is a job that we like to do every year. I'm gonna turn the coffee machine on and start to make some coffees, because I think the boys are going to be stopping for a coffee break in a second. So I'm really happy to say that we are working again with the Financial Times, which is really a collaboration that Charlie and I absolutely love because we have been subscribers to um, the digital edition of the Financial Times for a little while now. It's really important to us that the news that we consume is accurate and incredibly well researched because it can be really overwhelming with the amount of news sources and news information that we are exposed to, whether that's as soon as you wake up in the morning, you turn on your phone um, and you see so many articles on social media, it's really hard to figure out which bits of information you're consuming are actually true. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, and also editing it down to the information that you personally want to consume. I think I read a fact the other day that by the time we, in this day and age, hit lunchtime, we have consumed more information than our great ancestors hundreds of years ago would have consumed in their entire lives, and that just absolutely blows my mind. There is so much information out there, so to have all of our news in one place and to know confidently that it's accurate and well-researched is so, so important to Charlie and I. So that's why we personally get the digital subscription to Financial Times. We've got it on our phones. I know that during his coffee break now, Charlie will be having a flick through the latest articles to stay informed. Um, but I thought I would share a few of my favourite features and a few of my favourite articles lately. So what's really clever about um, the Financial Times is, so at the moment it's showing FT Weekend, and I find that these are slightly more, um, maybe light, light articles. Times like now when I don't necessarily have time to sit down and read at this exact moment, I just save them and then it goes to my saved feed and I can read them later, maybe when I take a little coffee break later or if I'm on the train going into London or something. So on my personal feed, these are articles that are relevant and interesting to me based on articles that I've read in the past. So I normally find that the kind of articles that I get shown are within the food and drink category, the style category, the UK agriculture category um, and travel, whereas when Charlie opens his up, he's probably gonna get sports, politics and things like that. So it can be really, really personalized. There's so much news at the moment um, about farmers. I know that Charlie and I have been talking about it a lot in vlogs, but there's been so much movement with what Riverford have been doing, trying to encourage the government to discuss the way that supermarkets pay farmers more fairly. And there was a really interesting article if I go to my saved feed. So these are ones 
that I have saved to read a little bit later. There's an article here about how there are apparently some plans to change and switch up the labelling for homegrown food products, including high animal welfare standards, which links in quite nicely to the fact that we went to the farm shop this morning. You know, it's really important to Charlie and I to try and support local growers, both a health point of view, but also because we want to support our local farmers. Um, and this article you can actually listen to, which is really, really helpful because if I'm out in the garden and my hands covered in soil, then essentially it's like a continual, regularly updating news podcast that we can listen to when we're busy. Here's Char. Um, I was just saying about how we like to get the Financial Times because the articles are relevant to us, well researched, um, and I was well, I saying think... that my favourites are like fashion, travel, <clears throat> how to spend it, and food and agriculture. Well that's the thing, and I think, well first and foremost, and we've spoken about Financial Times before, and that's why it was a great opportunity when they approached us, because we, we were already very familiar with Financial Times, and mm -hmm. it's genuinely one of the few news sources I believe to be trustworthy nowadays. Yeah, so um, yeah, there's so many, there's so many, and you always have to, I think, it's like anyone you follow on Instagram, anyone you, you listen to on their podcast. Sadly, I think it is important that you consider what, what's their aim here? What's their goal? If it's, if it's Tim Spector, it's to achieve, <clears throat> I think he wants to go down as a big name for achieving like a lot of greatness in health, which is a great goal. I think the Financial Times and, and uh, you know, you can look up, it's, it's privately owned, but um, it's a lot more reliable in terms of the news sources. You see a lot more proper, what I'd call proper journalism. You can sit and read a Financial Times article like I did over breakfast yesterday mm -hmm. or even this morning with my yogurt. Um, and you can read one article for like half an hour, 40 yeah, minutes. It's like a, a mini it's a prop, book. It's proper journalism. And this is yeah. the thing, there's so many great journalists out there and I think they're, they're now gravitating towards the Financial Times. But for me, what I like about the Financial Times also is there's just interesting articles yeah. rather than a lot of other articles you might come into contact with other news outlets that you just feel like are either clickbait or, you know, are like a couple of paragraphs. Yeah. And often regurgitating another you know, quoting another news outlet. Yeah. And I do, I think, I think the app is brilliant. Yeah. Do you know the one thing that I would, I am starting to think that I would love is to have the print as well because they do the weekend no, section. No, you get it on the app too. No, I know, but I love, I don't know, there's part of me that, that the weekend bit is <laughs> the really school, cool. The big, yeah. Yeah. Um, the pink pages. Um, and I was saying how we like to look at travel articles as well. So there's one, Charlie and I have been talking a lot about wanting to visit Tuscany this summer. Oh yeah. And um, that, as the Charlie Cotswolds said- The Cotswolds of Italy. The Cotswolds of Italy. As Charlie said, it's just so well researched, you know, that someone has literally spent like days or weeks researching these articles. So every bit of information that we find on the FT is incredibly um, accurate. It feels genuine, doesn't it? Yeah, so this is an article that we've been, that we were debating over breakfast earlier in the week, looking at all of these different beautiful places in Tuscany, Tuscany that we want to visit. And then there's style articles. Have you seen the one all about gilets? No. Um, I've got it saved. You can never own so many gilets. What I would say is on the FT, there's a lot of other stuff that's quite entertaining. Mm -hmm. So like, this is one that's actually haven't read, but how the 92 year old snack maker behind Biscoff yeah. captivated Gen Z. Yeah. And it's so a whole ask about the Lotus Biscuit, which funnily enough, we had the at the yesterday. Leica shoot yesterday. Yeah. And it's like a relatively unknown 92 year old Belgian company is climbing up the global snack maker, snack maker rankings, outshining rivals and captivating Gen Z. Because of social media. That's, and it, they're a bit like a, uh, an example of like Stanley. Stanley. So there's almost going to be a list of these like old school brands mm. that were okay and were kind of successful, mm -hmm. kind of probably dying out a bit, that are now like utilizing social media to become almost trendy again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, look, I, I think I think if you're someone, if you're someone that's interested in expanding your horizons of knowledge, and if you're someone that listens to a lot of podcasts, I mm -hmm. think the FT complements that approach really nicely. Yeah. Um, and I think it's something you can dip in and out of. It gives you things to chat about as well. Like we're going out for Sunday roast with friends tomorrow, and it, it's articles that you find on here. They're good conversation starters as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. And even there's an article here that I've saved, and I'm actually going to send this one to my mum because yeah. it's all about pickleball, and that's a sport that she's um, got interested in lately. So you can send articles to friends, um, you can download them, you can listen to them, and that's all part of the dig digital subscription. Mm. Um, we like the how to spend it section as well, don't we? Yeah. Have I, I showed you this article the other day about changing your health fate. 
So this is one about all like Huberman Labs and oh, yeah. things that you can do in London. Yeah. Yeah. So I read obviously I read Outlive in um, January at the beginning of the year, and health is something that's very important to Charlie and I. It's something that we love to consume a lot of information about <clears throat> and the um, wellness and fitness section on the FT again just incredibly well researched like if I was to find all of these clinics in London it would take me hours and hours and hours but someone's done the hard work for me um, so yeah just whatever your interest whether it's politics or science I mean that's I think that's the thing and you can and, and look we're still learning right we're still learning with the app um, but I think what's interesting is obviously you've got your my topics my FT topics so I think that's quite a nice way of sort of curating what, you know, your, your interests. We've obviously done wellbeing, fitness, UK agriculture, travel, style, food and drink, food and beverage, agriculture. Mm. I actually am going to add health to that yeah. and I'm going to add politics to that. Mm -hmm. As with anything, our sort of mantra now is to question everything. Mm -hmm. And I think even when you read something in the FT, if it's something you're like, oh, that's very interesting, but let me just cross-reference that. And of course, we have a mobile phone. We can Google things, mm. cross-check them. And then, it, yeah, it's just a great source of information. I find that a lot of the articles as well, they give you two sides of the story. So the one that I was mentioning earlier about the homegrown produce, the article is saying how it's become a debate in Parliament as to whether we should label things a certain way. And um, my, sometimes I think that I'm very blinkered. I think that things should be, obviously we should label when things are homegrown British produce. Why mm -hmm. would you not want to? And then this article presents the other side of the argument as well. But it's good for both of us to have more of a broad, um, yeah. different opinions. On and that's, look, that's why we love, look, of course we read the comments on YouTube videos and largely everyone's super supportive and I love people saying no actually I don't agree with you on that because of this yeah I don't love it when people who I don't agree with you on this and don't give another reason because yeah, that's not why. how to build Let's an argument debate. but I don't want to have debates but it, it, it all the time but it's interesting hearing other people's perspectives mm. and a hundred percent we're always learning yeah we're we're not we don't think we're always right we don't think that we know everything and it's just I think in the world we live in now it's just very important we're all as informed as possible and that's why it's important when you when we when we watch things and when we consume fictional stuff mm. I mean our big thing at the moment our big sort of um, what's the word uh, the, the big uh, thing that we keep nitpicking on is the fact that all the health information in like an A&E section of a movie is incorrect mm, yeah. it's like for god's sake get the CPR bit correct so yeah. that people are learning from even if it's a film you know yeah um, relevant accurate but, information but there you go. yeah anyway. So that's a little snippet. We could go on and on, as you can imagine, as to why we love our digital subscription to the Financial Times. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box down below. Have a little look. Um, and if you've got one already, then let us know what articles you've been loving lately. What have you got saved? And maybe we could share like in a few of the upcoming vlogs, just- like, Some information. Yeah, share some of our it. favorite articles. Cause honestly, it's just what we, what we think we know is just the tip of the iceberg. And I just love to, dig so much deeper which is something that we can do with our well businesses. and i think look i think something that we've not our knowledge is very limited on is is you know the financial side of things which is why we've got toby and why we've talked about financial advice i used to think the ft was literally just like stocks oh, and jazz. i did it's as well so and i think broad. maybe it started out like that but i can't be sure but yeah. obviously it's a lot broader than that yeah. however there is uh, you know a lot of information about that side of things yeah um and i think it's important to consider with that we learn more on that side because yeah. that you can you the information in the FT can actually help have a real financial uh, benefit to you mm -hmm. and your oh, decisions yeah. you're making with stocks and shares and that side of things but that's something that we're still very new to it is indeed right right darling you get crack cracking um, I'm gonna make some plums and crisps crisps and as soon as they're in the oven I'm gonna start doing my snowdrop splitting Okay, so we are going to be having for lunch the um, parsnip and potato soup that I made at the end of the last vlog, but I really want to just kind of elevate it a little bit, as you know I love to do with my soups. So, one of the things that I grabbed from the farm shop this morning was a new parsnip, and I'm going to make some parsnip crisps to go on top. So, all you need is a parsnip, salt and pepper, and some olive oil. And to make them really thin, I'm actually gonna use a potato peeler to get some really thin layers of parsnip ready to put in the agar, the hottest one for around 20 minutes, and hopefully that should do the trick.
you've seen me make a few times before, my breadcrumbs or um, croutons. So simply olive oil, salt and pepper, and then some Italian seasoning. And I'm gonna pop these next to the parsnips in the agar, and they should get nice and crispy while I finish preparing the soup. Okay, my parsnip soup is on a low heat, just slowly heating through, and I've added some nice double cream in there. I've got my seed mixture here, and I'm just gonna pour a small amount, medium amount, into this saucepan, and I'm just gonna lightly toast these, because that'll be delicious on top of the soup. Well, if that's not a scrumptious bowl of soup, then I don't know what is. So we've got a homemade parsnip potato and a little bit of apple soup, toasted seeds, homemade croutons, homemade little parsnip crisps, don't worry, this is my one, and then homegrown microgreens. It smells scrumptious, and we're gonna eat it outside in the glorious sunshine. Yay! Well, lunch was a lovely success. Now coming into the greenhouse. These are the bits that I planted just the other day with Jake and I thought I am actually going to leave them in here because even on a day like today, it's just so lovely and warm. I need to do a little bit of tidying up after our photo shoot. Gosh, it was so typical that day. It was so miserable. And then on a weekend when I'm not shooting anything, it's beautiful blue skies. But, so I've got a few tasks I need to do. Lots of dead heading needs to be done here. Don't know whether to just plant these bulbs now. And um, obviously these ones are still going strong and looking beautiful, but these bulbs could probably be planted ready for next year. And look at these beautiful crocus. They come out and show us their beautiful bright pollen when the sun shines. I've nearly got a full heart here of small loo roll tubes to do a few more sweet peas. I've got these ones out. Sweet pea modern grandiflora. Um, but anyway, before I do that, while it's still sunny, I'm going to do a little bit of planting. So I need a little trowel and some gloves. taking a quick break from the gardening and I've done a little bit of a flower refresh. I find that um, roses, if you give them a really good chop and freshen the water, then sometimes they can give you a whole second lease of life. These are the roses that Charlie's mum bought us last weekend and they were looking a bit sad, so I've split them up into smaller little posy glasses and now they look a lot happier. My cake stand is suspiciously empty, so I think I might see if I can do any kind of banana chocolate muffins or something. In just over an hour, the boys are gonna come in and watch the rugby, so it'd be good if I can have some of those 
on the go ready for that, um, but I think Charlie wants my help spreading some of the compost on the herbaceous borders, so I'm gonna make myself a quick coffee and then get on with that. Dickens is looking very snuggly. You've been really helpful out in the garden. I couldn't have actually done it without you, so thank you very much. I got my sleeves so grubby. I've had to pop a fresh jumper on. Okay, luckily I've got everything here that I need to do the lovely um, banana and oat. They're kind of cinnamony, nutmeggy, walnuty, delicious muffins. Of course, I'm just gonna do it in the Thermomix because it's so much quicker and easier. This should only take me around 10 minutes. So let's get started. I filmed that from start to finish and it was a grand total of 11 minutes of footage so that is how quick it was to whiz these together in the Thermomix. I'm now going to bake them for around 20-25 to 25 minutes, don't mind my dirty Yorkshire pudding tin and they should be ready, look at that, just in time for kickoff. Alexa set timer for 20 minutes. So this wonderful production line that we've got going on here, the boys are bringing the bark mulch onto the beds. As Charlie said, they are going to very much deserve their burger and steaks later. And then Lala and I are just kind of maneuvering it into position, making sure it's not covering up too many of these little plants coming through. And this is gonna just give the borders a really nice aesthetic finish, protect from any late frosts, bring some nutrients into the beds, and also when you're down on your hands and knees um, spreading the mulch, it's a quite a good opportunity to just see how your plants are doing. So for example, I did notice here, one of my lupins is getting a bit slug eaten. Just as typically I said the other day, only the other day that my lupins don't typically get eaten, but it seems to only be some varieties because this one here is doing absolutely fine, touch wood. We've got a lovely little bit of afternoon sunshine. The rugby starts in about 20 minutes but now I just need to go and check on my muffins and I think they will be very happily snuffled up by our team of hard-working gardeners. This lovely light. Okay let's go and check the muffins. We don't want them to burn. Beautiful hellebores. Gorgeous. I think five minutes more. Serving of these chocolate, banana, uh, oat, cinnamon, nutmeg, I'm sorry Dickie, you definitely can't have any. Little muffins, only took 15 minutes total to make. Let's go and deliver them to the hard workers. Look at this gorgeous afternoon that we've got. Ooh, look at the melted chocolate on these. Yummy! Got your rewards! Well, the muffins have gone down an absolute treat and I've just undone another order from 
health um thought i would share it with you because lots of you made the most of the discount code that i shared last time so obviously it was something that you liked to see the discount code i'll again leave it on the screen um and leave everything linked down below but i was really happy to see this brand on the website um because i'd seen them on instagram but i wasn't aware of any way you could get them in the UK until I saw them on health. So this is, um, it's kind of, you know, I love to do jazzy different lattes and matches and different nice cozy warming drinks. So I'm gonna give this a try now. It's the blue lavender latte. I think that just sounds amazing. And they're made with um, various lovely adaptogenic items which are nice and healthy and wonderful, so can't wait to try that. And then last time I ordered from this brand, Anima Mundi, I ordered the rose chai and it is so yummy. And this time I've ordered the blue lotus, I think, if I remember correctly, is this the one? I think this is, oh yeah, relaxing and calming tea. So this is a really good one to take before bed, apparently. And on this website, you just get loads and loads of huge variety of different health food brands that otherwise I don't know, you'd probably have to go to loads of individual websites to order. I keep seeing again on my Instagram Explore page how good organic tallow is as a skincare product. I guess like a super natural version of like an eight hour cream or something. So I got this unscented version, good for like cuticles, dry skin. Some people even use it as a balm after, you know, your actives. So we shall see. I'm intrigued. Uh, whenever I do a health order, I always add some dirty because I'm obsessed with it <laughs> every single morning. I needed a top up of my chaga, which is the energy mushroom. Oh, it literally says up there. Didn't even realize that. <laughs> um, yeah, I pop a scoop of that into my morning coffee every single day. And then I've also got a top up of reishi. Reishi has loads and loads of different um, health benefits. I definitely recommend the Fantastic Fungi documentary on Netflix if you want to know more. And also just um, have a listen to the podcast that one of the co-founders, Simon, has done because it really goes into so much detail about how incredible mushrooms are. I'm always amazed to think that penicillin came from a mushroom. It's got so many, so many health benefits. And then this is actually a gift for Lilla who sat in the living room watching the rugby, so I won't explain what it is. <laughs> I'll just let you see it, because I think this will be quite handy and something that she'll enjoy doing. So, I'm gonna give it to her now and light the fire. So there we go, my little health. Oh, forgot to mention this. This um, looks like similar packaging to my latte items, but it's actually a bath product. Agent Nature, it's a rose-infused coconut milk bath powder. I thought that sounded heavenly. Soothing, hydrating, softening, calming, and promotes a feeling of relaxation. Two or three scoops in a running bath. Soak for 30 minutes. That sounds heavenly, and I love this packaging. So there we go, just a really nice selection of products. Sunday morning. Well, the frost has just about melted. It was only minus one, so not a not a major frost. But we've just come out to admire the borders. I know they don't look that exciting, but now that they've got the mulch on, they look a lot tidier. We are heading out for a dog walk while the skies are blue. You see the sunshine just creeping onto the pond. It's rather nippy. But we're going to take the boys up to Winderton. What a beautiful morning!
silent to humans. Neither of them have given the slightest of... You'd hear it though, surely. I've had this in this jacket for ages. Surely we would hear it. I don't know, because it's maybe really high-pitched. If anyone's dogs are reacting to this... Feels like I'm wearing ankle weights because there's so much mud on my wellies. Oh, Dexy's turning around. Hello my darlings, it's a couple of hours later, we're back from our dog walk um, and we just really appreciated getting out into the sunshine, into the fresh air this morning. I did plan on doing a peloton but sometimes na nature calls, that's an expression for when you need the loo isn't it? <laughs> sometimes um, getting outside calls and the boys hadn't been for a walk yet this weekend so we thought that we would take them for a really nice walk up to Winderton. As you saw it was exceptionally muddy. I felt like I had ankle weights on because the mud on my wellies was so heavy. So this afternoon we are heading to the Bell in Charlbury, one of one of three <laughs> great pubs in Charlbury. I feel so fortunate to live in the middle of an area where we've got so many fantastic pubs around um, us. Charlie and I were saying, um, we were talking about where I, where I grew up, where I used to live, and how we'd have to travel for so long, so far, if we wanted to go to a really fantastic pub, and yet where we are here, we're totally spoilt. There are so many fantastic ones. Um, and even not just pubs like where we went last night, the Cotswold Guy, that was scrumptious food um, in a far more relaxed setting. Not the cheapest, I must say. We actually figured out and we were chuckling to ourselves that the steak last night per gram was actually more expensive than Hawksmoor in the middle of London, which is notoriously um, premium, let's say, but we love the Cotswold Guy and I, I think it's a fantastic place for brunch, they do great baps, they do great cinnamon rolls, um, they do really fun pizza nights, so yeah, it's a really nice place, place to go to. I actually had a message on Instagram as we were leaving, um, a lady very kindly said she didn't want to interrupt our meal, but she is a YouTube follower, so if you're watching then hello, I hope you had a gorgeous meal there. Um, I'm very polite and considerate of you. I think um, we were we were sat, Charlie and I and my mum and my brother, we were sat on a very small table, like all facing inwards, so probably not looking at <laughs> the most approachable, but I just, I love when I bump into those of you that watch the videos here in the Cotswolds and that you're, you're um, following our recommendations because, yeah, I just... I'm glad that you're experiencing this part of the world that we love so, so much. Um, so yeah, we're heading to the bull, no, not the bull, the bell. <laughs> There's the bull and the bell in Charbury, both are great. But we're heading to the bell shortly for a Sunday roast with George and Petra. We're kind of getting into a routine at the moment of cooking a Sunday roast one weekend and then going out for a Sunday roast the next weekend. And obviously we had all the family here last weekend, so it's definitely time to be fed and have someone else do the washing up so that's why i'm popping some makeup on post shower i really needed a pamper shower i woke up this morning and this this last few days i've not been feeling great i've been i've had a i've been calling it mount kilimanjaro on my chin a really really big blemish the biggest one i've actually had in quite a while um and i think i'm pretty sure it's stress related and you might be thinking what an earth are you stressed about? Um, just remember that I share with you a maximum of three hours of my entire week and there is a lot that um, I don't share and um, yeah I'm not going to go into detail <laughs> about certain things but um, yeah there's, there's something that's um, I don't want to talk about online but yeah just remember that you don't see everything here on the YouTube videos and people can get 
low, people can get sad, and you don't always need to know why. So anyway, we shall we shall move on. Um, but brows are looking good <laughs> if we're looking for a positive. Forever grateful to my little bare brow. Yeah, so I just haven't wasn't feeling 100% um, my best this last couple of weeks really. And I don't know if you guys notice it as well, but I really notice it in my YouTube videos. Um, I feel like you can tell when my energy is not tip top. The last few videos, I personally have felt that it's been really obvious that something's been off with me, um, but I don't know if you guys have noticed that as well. But I, I personally think it's been quite obvious, but I know. I know what's going on. Anyway, um, I think that stress has led to, to this Kilimanjaro on my face, um, and also time of the month and just feeling my body holds on to everything around that time of the month, every bit of water that I drink, every bit of chocolate that I eat, I just hold on to it. Um, so I've just not been feeling my best body-wise, and I think, you know what, everyone goes through those feelings, whether you do reformer pilates four times a week and see a personal trainer twice a week and eat a fairly good diet, Everyone goes through those times when they're not feeling great. So I guess the reason I'm going off on this little tangent is to say that I appreciate that sometimes I do just show like picture perfect, rosy, you know, everything's great, going to the organic food shop, going to do my reform Pilates, but sometimes everyone gets those down days and that's okay. And, um, we put some fake tan on, <laughs> we put some nice makeup on, and we try and make ourselves feel good. Spending time outside, spending time with friends and family, that for me is my best tonic. So that's what we're doing this weekend. So I popped some gradual tan on. Um, hopefully that will, I know it's kind of sad, but that will actually make me feel so much better in my body. <laughs> I'd also, <laughs> TMI, but I'd also not shave my legs in like two weeks. Um, and to be honest, since I did all of that hair removal, laser hair removal, it's it's not permanent. And if you stop for a while, I've not kept it up over winter, then your leg hairs do start to grow back. A lot lighter, yes, and nowhere near as densely as prior to doing the laser hair removal. But they definitely do come back. <laughs> Major overshare TMI, but... I'm freshly leg shaved, I've got my fake tan on, um, I've got freshly washed hair, so yeah. That is my little self-care for a Sunday lunchtime. I feel like all of my mascaras have gone off <laughs> in like the space of a week. I think I'm going to persevere with this one because it's the best. It's the Controlled Chaos Mascara from Shiseido, but I'm actually gonna have to throw away my Merit. I'm pretty sure it's actually come to the end anyway, um, but I used it yesterday and it's just really gone all claggy. So that is now in the bin. This one, it, it is really good, the Shiseido, and it delivers so much product onto your lashes and really separates them out, but it's not mega lengthening. So then sometimes, oh, I've got a bit of foundation on the back of this. Sometimes I like to mix it with Bare Minerals. Oh my gosh, I can't hold anything. Bare Minerals Strength and Length. And this one has ultra separating and lengthening. There we go. What time is it? Oh my goodness, we need to leave in 15 minutes and I don't even have dry hair. I was actually going to curl my hair, but I definitely don't have time for that. Seems it's still wet. This is honestly just such a saviour. It's the one that I got from Cult Beauty. It's the Dry Bar Cult Beauty. I mean, it is quite frankly a monstrosity. It's so ginormous, but it is lightweight. And if you've got a lot of hair and you just need it dry and styled within five minutes, then this is wonderful. Okay, can I get my hair dried in five minutes? Because I also have washing downstairs that I need to hang up before we leave the house in 15 minutes. outfit of the day as we are running out the door i'm triple holland coopering with my new um they're kind of like the jodhpur leggings dark green knit and then the fabulous 
blazer, which is officially my new favorite thing. Really smartens up an otherwise casual look. Okay, next stop, the bell. Oh, this is the worst lighting in the entire world. I feel like I'm about to go in for a business meeting. It's um, very new for me wearing blazers, but oh, it's my mole. <laughs> very new for me wearing blazers, but um, this one is so lovely and warm. It's almost that transitional, I mean, today's been cold, but I knew I wasn't gonna be spending much time outside. But I think as we go into spring, when you just want something over your shoulders, but you don't necessarily need a full coat. I think I'll be getting a lot of wear out of this. So I'm really glad that I tried it on in the Holland Cooper um, boutique. So we had a lovely Sunday roast with George and Petra. If I was being critical, I would say that their cauliflower cheese was not creamy enough. It was just kind of like cauliflower that had once seen a cheese sauce, but had been left dry out a little bit. That would be my constructive criticism. I just think you can't really beat a Charlie Iron Sunday roast. Like the way that we do it, I say a Charlie Iron Sunday roast, normally it's me that does the cauliflower cheese and it takes some beating, it really does. Um, we did have pudding, but we've stopped off at the Chipping Norton petrol station to fuel up and we're gonna go in and get some chocolate because it is required. Um, and I, I have this weird thing where I actually can't eat chocolate or sweets by themselves, I have to eat them together. So I have to take a mouthful, a bite of chocolate and then a bite, a mouthful of sweeties. Very weird, I know. Um, but I have a lot of like food pairings <laughs> that I have to have together. Right, petroling, petroling is done. Let's go and get some snacks. What have you gone for? In the mood for fake chocolate. Fake chocolate? Yeah. Double decker and yeah. boost. And boost. Ooh, oh. I saw someone the other day and they had um, they had chocolate flavoured mini eggs. They got mini eggs. Okay. Oh, sorry, not chocolate flavour. They were um, chocolate orange flavour. Mini eggs. <gasps> Elite level chocolate. Can you see mini eggs anywhere? Can't see them anywhere. Back home again, and one of my children has been a very naughty boy. Yes, I'm talking about you, you absolute terror. So, we do not allow our children to go upstairs in this house for sausage dogs. It's not really good for their backs. Um, and also, someone once told me that sausage dogs, they like to patrol their area. So if you give them too big an area, like a big house, it can actually just make them anxious. So basically, Dexter and Dickens essentially live in the kitchen, the living room, and their bedroom. Except when we are in the drawing room and then they'll be allowed in there. But they're not normally allowed through the kitchen door, which they're perfectly happy with. However, Charlie and I just came home. Dexter was where he was meant to be in the kitchen, but Dickens was nowhere to be found. And then we just hear thud, 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 thud. And that is Dickens trundling down the stairs where he has been for the last four hours. Don't know how he got there. What sorcery, because obviously we shut the door. Um, so we obviously just did a little look around the house to see what gifts you'd left us in various bedrooms. There was a gift in the pink bedroom. Thank you for that. And then I went up to my dressing room. If you can say anything about Dickens, it's that if there is any food in the house, he will find it. He has been known to go through suitcases, go through bags, go through cupboards. If there is food somewhere, my little piglet will find it. So I go into my dressing room and the clothes that were neatly piled off on top of my poof are strewn everywhere. And this is really bad. A box of chocolates that was underneath all those clothes, way up in my dressing room, on the floor. But you obviously didn't like them, did you? Because you only ate one. But what he did like, and I thought that was it, I thought that was the extent of the damage, I then went into my 
bathroom and a certain sausage has gnawed their way through my pink champagne truffles that I'd actually hidden away as a little gift for someone. Oops, yes, it is gnawed into the champagne truffles and you clearly enjoyed those, didn't you? Because you didn't leave any champagne truffles left. Well, I think you might have a bit of a poorly tummy tonight. So mummy's going to have to keep an eye on you. That is my bunny. Anyway, so <laughs> it's only half past six. Um, I've got frutella and mini cream eggs to enjoy this evening as we watch Trigger Point. Um, and I'm gonna take off my gel nails. I had these done before Valentine's Day and they are grown out. They've not chipped in the slightest, but they are grown out. I don't know if this is gonna work. It's the Green Flash LED nail polish remover, but this is OPI, so I don't know. We're gonna give it a try. And from my manicurist collection, I've also got these little like clip-on things that are meant to help you keep your cotton pad in place. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, and then I might just, I've got the stuff that I used before our wedding last summer. This got my nails really strong because I haven't had a break from gel in quite a while. This is called the OPI Repair Mode and it's really good if you need a break from gel and you can do like five days to really get your nails strong. This is the best. You put it on, it's kind of like water. It dries. I would do two or three coats a day for about five days and then honestly your nails are just so strong. And then I've got a cuticle oil here as well. So I'm gonna do a little bit of pampering. Don't know where Charlie's got to, but I've got two sausages leaning up against me. Um, Charlie can't bear the noise of nail files <laughs> on my nails. So I'm gonna get that bit done before he comes down. It sounds like he's en route. And then we're gonna have a very chilled Sunday evening. <laughs> 